So in the last video, in the first section that we did, we set everything up and we got a very simple player or a unit spawning into the game. What we're going to do in this next section is build on that unit just a little bit more. And then we're also going to go ahead and sort those units based off of some of their attributes. Specifically, we're going to use their speed attribute. Now, before we get started though, I just want to mention that this project is actually imported from past versions of GMS. So a lot of the systems that we're going to see that we're going to use are a mix of the new stuff and the old stuff. For the units themselves, or rather what we're going to work on in this section, we are going to be looking at using some older stuff and bringing it into the new version. Okay, so like I said in the introduction, games development or what we're doing here is going to form the foundation for your own interpretation of it so if you want to swap some stuff out um then that's totally fine that's completely up to you that's the whole point is that this is going to act as a foundation and as a springboard for you guys to be able to create your own unique takes on it and if you guys have the time i would love to see them on any platform that you provided on if it's on itch or steam or whatever i'd love to see that some progress or something in the near future hopefully anyway let's get started with our design phase this is our theory here and like i said before this is an imported project from 2.2.2.5 i think it was that's when i imported it and back then we didn't have the constructors and the structs that we have now right so GMS 2.3, GMS 2.3 has constructors and structs, constructors. This is a very, very useful way to actually create your characters in a combat system like what we're making today. Because in reality, the objects themselves, they don't need to do any moving around, or at least in the very basic version of your game they don't really need to move around or change their sprites or anything like that so using a constructor could be enough for your game it could be however like i said because we imported this in from a past version of gms we are going to use the object object instance method instance and the reason why we're going to do that is we're actually going to use like i said it's it is a past version, but we are also going to use some of the debugging features that come with using objects, right? So that's our main, that's my main reason for using object instances because we can debug these objects. With constructors, you can also do some debugging, that's fine, um, but it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little more ex obscure compared to using just straight up instances and drawing text to where that particular object is. Now, another thing that I want to remind you guys of is that just because there are these two different approaches to creating your units in your game doesn't mean that there's only these two methods. There are plenty of variations in between. In fact, for just for reference, my personal opinion is to actually take a method that uses both object instances and uses a constructor system to create your units here. But we won't be doing that. We're just going to be sticking with object instances. Okay, so now that we've established that we're going to use this method here, let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's create a new layer and with our object instance, object instance, let me try and write as fast as I speak. Uh, with our object instances or our unit, we are going to store several pieces of data. The first set will be our base info. And we are going to store that in an array. All of this info is basically the stuff that we aren't going to change, but we are going to reference when we create our unit for the first time. So, for example, our base help and etc cetera, etc cetera. we've got base attack base defense whatever other in whatever other variables that you will need or whatever other information you will need 
this is all going into a single array. We are then going to create another array, which is our current. And this, this array of data here, this current info, this is going to hold our, all of this basically the same, but it's going to be stuff that we can change. So for example, current health, current, I'll just write HP. I'm pretty sure you guys know what that is. If we have our base health here, we're only going to read that. And we're going to use this information as a reference for other things such as drawing our UI or referencing, I don't know, if you have in your system, you might have stat changes for your units. You can use this base info as a reference and compare it to your current info and get the difference for whatever other effects that you might have in your game. For us, we are going to use the current HP, the um, SP, so our skill points, as well as our speed, so the unit speed itself. This is important because we won't be diving too much into things like the combat, uh, say like um, combat modifiers like uh, damage and defense and things like that. We won't be diving too deep into that, but we will be covering that uh, at least somewhat in our, um, in our tutorial series. But for now, these are the three main things that we will be focusing on because in the video coming up in this section as well, from the speed, we are actually going to sort our units because right now when we spawn our units into our game, they're being ordered basically according to how they spawn into it. We don't want that. We want some randomness in our game, right? I mean, if you could predict who is going to go first in each and every single encounter in your game, it would get pretty boring very quickly. So for us to add a little bit of randomness to our encounters, we are going to use this speed aspect or the speed information from our units and use a sorting algorithm for that. Not soft. <laughs> um, not softing algorithm. I'm trying to write sorting. <laughs> that's, that's all right. Sorting algorithm. Now don't worry if you've never written a sorting algorithm before. It's fine. We're going to be working with one of the many sorting algorithms that's out there. And it's actually going to be a modified version of Game Maker Studio's own sorting algorithm. And that is actually the bubble sort. Bubble sort. Okay, so this bubble sort is for what we're using. A bubble sort is totally fine. I think if you were to have way more units in your scene, let's say, I would say if you had maybe more than 10 units, I don't see any any RPGs that would have more than 10 units on screen at any given time. But just in case, if you're going for more than 10, you might want to look into other kinds of sorting algorithms. But for us, the bubble sort will be enough, but that's coming in a video much after. So like I said, let's recap really quickly before we start programming. We are going to set up our units. We're just going to work with the create event of our unit class. I still haven't found some usable sprites that we can use for our demo, but if you have your own, then that's great. That's that's good, actually. I'll just keep in mind that we are going to make some modifications to the ones that I do find that we are going to use, but we're only going to be working by and large in the create event. Create event. And we will also add in some extra events that we will need later on, but uh, most of the stuff that we're going to need will come from here, the create event itself. So that's it for this theory video. Hopefully it gives you a high enough level um, of information. I know it's a bit bare in terms of my explanations. So if you do have any questions as to why we're doing things or why we're going to take this specific approach, I'd love to hear those questions in the comment section below. Have a look at the graph, guys. We're going to hopefully uh, change that up. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.